dear short hand writers this is english short hand dictation number 59 and the dictation speed is 160 volts per minute ready start honorable speaker sir i am thankful to you for giving me this opportunity to speak on the aircraft amendment bill 2020 under this government whenever a bill is coming for amendment all the mps are trying to give their opinions and views in the hope that the government would come with a comprehensive bill but none of the mps is able to successfully stop the bill on none of the bills mps opinions are considered this aircraft amendment bill gives a statutory status to the directorate of civil aviation the bureau of civil aviation security the directorate general of civil aviation and the aircraft accident investigation bureau it is needless to say that this government has an authority to constitute and appoint the respective directors for all these three bureaus have you mentioned about the specific powers of the central government over regulatory bodies what is the function of all these three bureaus the directorate general of civil aviation is basically responsible for safety oversight and regulatory functions especially in case of breach of security or in case of accident the investigation procedures will be monitored by them the specific power says this bill empowers the central government to constitute and appoint director generals We agree that the government has the full power to constitute and appoint the director generals there is no doubt about it the second point is that apart from appointing these director generals with that due power you are again putting one clause which says the central government will empower any other authority to exercise the powers of the three directors already the government is working in the interest of the people i am not saying that the government is working for any private people the government is functioning only in the interest of the people the government has delegated the powers systematically to the respective director generals apart from delegating the powers this government is giving powers to a third party that is any other authority to exercise the power of three directors above all there is a third clause saying that the central government can issue the directions to each of these organizations in the public interest i do not know what this public interest is will these three directors go against the interest of the public this government should run in the interest of the public only finally you are also including the regulations of all the areas of air navigation services like cartography services aeronautical charting services including aeronautical information services and rescue services this bill empowers the bureau of civil aviation security or any authorized officer to issue directions surprisingly when you are giving powers to these three directors you are giving powers above all to some other external agency to exercise the power finally you say that the central government has the power to review the order passed by these director generals and also to resend or modify them now what is happening is this government not believing anybody this government is giving power to somebody and saying we do not believe you then the government again gives power to somebody else then finally the government is asking for a repeal the centralization of power is the crux of these amendments it also enhances the fine to the maximum limit for breaches under this act which is from rupees 10 lakh to rupees 1 crore respected chairperson i would like to know whether this fine is applicable to an individual only as has happened in the case of arnav goswami where he was travelling and some passenger passed a comment and then he was put in a no fly list with fine is it applicable to individual or is it applicable to government agencies like these director generals it is because in between 2018 and 2019 if you see the record it was 48% of near misses it has grown to 68% it is according to your answer given during the question hour why are these near misses happening in indian aircrafts it is because of lack of air traffic control officers these air traffic control officers work for hardly four and a half to five hours because that is all they can work they have to focus so much 
the fatigue level is so high that they cannot work beyond that but they are repeatedly put into the action that is why the near misses have increased many fold there are so many unemployed engineering graduates why is this government not considering appointing more atc officials in order to avoid the accidents that may occur i want to know at this juncture whether this act this fine of up to 1 crore rupees is applicable to individual only or to the directorate of civil aviation also or the respective or responsible bureau who is going to appoint these atc officers sir i have one important point why do we need all these amendments anyway one day we are going to sell air india do you know one thing when corona virus was at its peak in china it is only air india crew it is only air india flight it is only the air india pilot who boldly went and brought all the passengers and affected people from china back to india why have no other private airlines offered themselves to do this rescue operation when an actress was dead 3 years back in dubai you can recall some private airlines offered themselves to shuttle from mumbai to dubai to bring the corpse back to india but why have they not done this in public interest why is the government not insisting air india will be sold one day the government says that they have 80 sites to be sold and that is how they can survive they will say that it is not because of this problem their argument is that it was the problem of the capital or the interest because of the loan acquired by the earlier governments the government has to generate the resources but this government is basically selling and eating like in the previous generations they acquired the land and this generation will sell and survive basically the aviation sector in recent times is undergoing a turbulent times this is because of the imposition of heavy aviation fuel tax is the government ready to cut some taxes on the civil aviation sector is the government paying back to the air india in time in lieu of any other services availed by the government it is because as it is air india is sinking and the government has already proposed to sell it so at this point of time i would like to know whether the government takes equal responsibility for the current status of air india moreover as one honorable member pointed out in all the airports security is a major problem though it is not part of this bill since the honorable minister who is responsible for the functioning of this ministry is there let me tell him that scanning during security checks can be expanded in a much better way at least during peak hours coming to price regulation price is not at all standard in the civil aviation sector the passengers are facing a huge problem when they go to book ticket at one time the computer is showing one rate then immediately it changes depending on the need of the passengers i do not know what technology is used with artificial intelligence immediately the rate fluctuates not to the lower side but to the higher side but this is a common problem though you claim that you are having a problem and the sector is sinking day by day financially the common man is paying out of his pocket heavily i do not know why this sector is not doing well this is an important point we will have to have some kind of pr- price regulations because air travel is not a luxury anymore it is an essential commodity so the honorable minister has to keep this in mind in times of air india i would like to say that it is facing a lot of difficulties in paying salaries to its employees in time air india is also encouraging its employees to retire under voluntary retirement scheme on the other hand there are some officers who have been retired due to some charges and are in the aggrieved list also but are getting extension with full administrative powers i would request the honorable minister to look into the matter and ask your people if such things are happening there i am saying it because there have been several representations from my end lastly i would like to say something in res- respect of my constituency there is a proposal for an airport in my constituency i would urge upon the honorable civil aviation minister to consider this proposal mr minister i know that we are a signatory to the chicago convention and we want to come at par with the international standards of security i also do not completely rule out that we have not grown many times but at the same time these near misses can be avoided by appointing more air traffic controllers because that is the point where we have to really hit 
i hope that this government will pay more attention to it and if it comes up with a comprehensive bill putting in all the related contexts into it we will all support the bill